Hi friends! Today it is a beautiful early spring day here in South Los Florida and all around town we have these gorgeous yellow trees blooming and I would love to introduce you to my friend the Tababunya tree. So when you take a look at these beautiful bright yellow flowers, you can kind of get an idea of why this tree is often called the golden trumpet tree because the flowers look a little bit like trumpets and it's also called the Caribbean trumpet tree. Here where I'm at in Southwest Florida, we actually have a diff uh, like several different species, but they're all in that same genus of the Tababuya. And we even have a couple of other ones that are in another genus, which they all st used to be grouped together, like kind of lumped together in the Begoniaceae family, but then in the 90s they were separated out with DNA testing. That makes it really challenging to tell the different species apart because they're so very similar, but this one we know is a Tavoya RF tree, and so we're able to talk about its medicinal properties. But in, in general, we'll be speaking today about the members of the Begoniaceae family that are in this trumpet tree in both of those two genuses. All of these trees that have the word trumpet in them, whether it's the golden trumpet tree or the purple trumpet tree or the Caribbean trumpet tree or the silver trumpet tree, all have flowers that have this characteristic trumpet shape with five lobes. You'll know that it is one of these trees and not something like an alamanda or a jessamine because it will be growing on a tree. Carolina jessamine, of course, would be as a vine and alamanda can be, it can be viney, it can also be shrubby. But when you see a tree that just has this incredible explosion of these golden flowers and blunt bunches like this that have that, that characteristic trumpet shape, then you know it's in that Begoniaceae family and it's either the Tababuya or the Handaranthus. Many of the trees in this genus also have what we call palmate leaves, and it's a little hard to show you on this one because most of the leaves have fallen off, but typically all the leaves will come out from a single stem, and you can think of them as being almost like the palm of the hand. The leaf shape can also tell us a lot about the tree. For instance, we know that this one is Tababoya aria because the leaflets coming off of that center point are long and thin, whereas some of the other members of this genus would be like a little bit shorter and a little bit thicker. Many of the trees in this genus also have this really unique kind of gnarled bark that flakes off quite easily. And this one, Tababuya aria, is also known as the silver trumpet tree because it has a very beautiful silvery bark as well. But if you look up into the branches, you can see that it's almost ropey and they, they really hang down and shower almost like a willow tree too. Now this tree isn't native to Florida. It is found in South America and Central America, but it is kind of a favorite here locally. As you can see, it blooms beautifully with this golden, just kind of amazing canopy of yellow flowers. So it's been planted around quite around town in a number of different places. And this time of the year, we're in like early March when it is cold enough for the trees to lose its leaves. They have to lose pretty much all of the leaves before they'll flower. And you can see this, this beauty right here has, has lost most of them. There's still a few left though. But it is really popular here, and I actually for a little while, the Caribbean trumpet tree or the Caribbean um, tababuya was the city of Sarasota's like official tree for a bit. So even though it's not native, it's considered, and it is exotic, it's considered super beautiful. It's not terribly invasive, we're not super worried about it, and it is really, really beautiful for landowners to plant. The only kind of problem with that is it does make a little bit of a mess, although I think it's kind of pretty because we don't get snow here in Florida, but we do get this beautiful carpet of golden flowers. The Tababuya trees have a lot of uses. As you can see, it's a pretty strong tree and it's super kind to us humans. It makes quite a nice little place to climb. But this wood of both the Tababuya and the Handrosanthus, which is the other genus that the trees that were very similar were split into, well, they make amazing furniture and they are known to have some of the sturdiest wood in South America and the Caribbean. In fact, there are trees 
of this species that were around the area where the Panama Canal was built and even though they died they're still standing today because the wood is so sturdy and so strong. So it's highly prized by wood turners and furniture building builders and it's actually been used to help make decks. It's really really prized for that because the wood doesn't rot and it's it lasts for a really long time and it's not susceptible to insects. So even all the way up in New York City where Coney Island, the boardwalk up there, it's actually made out of wood from these types of trees. The trees in the Tababuya genus actually have some really exciting medicinal properties in addition to having a lot of value for us as humans as furniture and the wood and also of course these beautiful flowers for pollinators as we're standing out here today there's all sorts of bees and wasps and ants all over this tree and butterflies too they are loving it you may have heard of this tree's cousin as a western herbalist as Paua de Arco now if you're familiar with Paua de Arco at all the name means bow wood and that's because Tababuya imperata was which is Palo de Arco in South America was used a lot for making weapons in addition to furniture and, and other things for wood, but especially bows. It was very prized for that because it was so strong and so flexible. Now that tree has kind of a similar flowers to these. They're that trumpet shape. And as you can see, these are golden, but the Palo de Arco tree is actually kind of more the color of my shirt. It's a really pretty purple pink. That tree is very famous for the inner bark being used for like hot infections inside the body. It's got antifungal properties, anti-malarial, and even depending upon who you ask, anti-cancer properties. So you might not be as familiar with its cousin, this beautiful Caribbean trumpet tree or golden trumpet tree, depending upon which species we're talking about. But it turns out that it has a lot of the same effects. In fact, Tababoya aria, which is this one right here, which actually the, one of the names for it in addition to Caribbean trumpet tree, but is actually the silver trumpet tree because it's this beautiful silver gray wood. It is famous for being used to help treat snake bite. Now, before you think, oh, come on, where's the scientific proof in that? There's actually a lot of it. There's so much research in the literature, in fact, for using the Tababoya aria extracts to help treat especially Bothrops snake bites. Now Bothrops is a genus of pit viper and it's very common in South America. There's a number of different species and they're also very very strong venom. So those vipers are things like the lance heads and we have multiple different studies using different types of Bothrops genus snakes with extracts from this tree and guess what every single time they have been proven keep in mind this is mice we really don't want to test it on humans but every single time the the extract from this tree has been proven to be analgesic which means that it helps stops pain that is super important for snake bites because while we have anti-venoms for some of these things and that will stop the venom from spreading it actually doesn't do anything for the pain and nine times out of ten in addition to some of the problems that you have with snake bite like tissue decay and neurological issues depending upon the type of venom that pain is super super troubling and super hard to combat but this beauty right here the inner bark of it is actually pretty darn good at that we also have scientific peer-reviewed articles and research that show us that the extracts from this tree's bark not only help from analgesic but they also help to combat the in the venom especially in the neurotoxic venom snakes and that is huge so what part is used well if you look down here at this tree it actually has outer bark that so these pieces have fallen off um but it actually has outer bark that comes off pretty easily and if you look inside the outside is pretty pretty tough and scaly on the inside it's really soft and i'm not going to do this because i don't want to hurt the tree but it will flake off quite easily it's almost like paper and so this inner bark is what is used in cases of snake bite and has been proven to be um, quite strong medicine The medicinal possibilities of this tree are pretty incredible, but we really do need to remember that while we always want to look for the science and, and the, uh, the studies and the journal articles and all the review, we really do need to remember that this is something that the indigenous people have known about for, you know, hundreds, in some cases, thousands of years. So even if something doesn't have a lot of science backing it, those old wives tales, those traditional stories, we really shouldn't discount them because that medicine is very real, even if we haven't spent time, and time studying it. And really the Tabuya tree, I'm sorry, 
In my family, we call it tabuya. That's what my dad always called it. So you'll probably hear me mispronounce pronounce it. The, but it's because it's three. It's it's got tabebuya. So it's four syllables, not three, like I try to make it. But the tabebuya tree is a great example of it because there are over seventy different species that were in that genus originally. And then when it was split apart, then it it made it even more difficult. And now scientists are still even arguing about who belongs in which genus. So it might be years and years and years. Be, before all of these similar species are really tested out to see whether or not they have the specific extracts or the specific chemicals in them. Instead, we can look at that ethnobotanical and ethnographic record to, and ask the traditional healers to share their wisdom and knowledge and we'll be able to find out quite a bit of these trees until the science catches up.